Hi guys, so today I am back and I am filming a different kind of video for you. So you may have read the title of this video and for industry talks, what is that? So basically I was speaking to my friend and I said to her, I want to start making videos about something that like I know about and that I'm good at. Um, because obviously I love makeup, I love beauty, etc. But there's so many other people that do that, that's not my forte. So my friend said, well why don't you make videos about dancing and about the industry and about how you can help people. So basically what I'm going to be doing from now on is talking about my industry which is dancing and performing. And I want to talk to the camera and talk to you guys a little bit just so that I can help anybody out that also wants to go into that sort of career path or anybody that's just interested in trying out extras work, dance work, anything that I can help you with I will. So obviously because this is my first video I haven't had any questions or anything so I'm just going to talk about one job that I've done recently and two auditions that I did last week and talk through them with you and talk about what I think went well and what didn't and what I would suggest for you to do slash not to do. So basically I can tell you my mistakes <laughs> so that you don't go and do them. You can learn from my mistakes. Throughout this video if you have any questions about what I talk about or any questions about anything else please do comment below because I plan on doing more videos like this. It is going to be a long video so sit back, relax, maybe get a cup of tea <laughs> and if you like me a block of cheese I don't know. Take your time to absorb anything in, especially if you are wanting to do performing as a career. So basically the first thing I'm going to talk about is a job that I auditioned for and got. And it's definitely a job that I didn't expect to be getting so soon, I was lucky to get it. I won't talk about it too much because I can't go into too details, but basically I got a film job. Now I got this job through an audition and the audition was on an agency called Star Now. Now if you're a performer, if you've just left uni or if you're just looking for job and performance, Star Now is really good. It's the site I use to find quite a lot of my work and auditions. It's basically an app slash online site that you pay about £30 for six months usage on and it posts loads of different auditions, be that acting, dancing, modelling, singing. Now this audition was just posted as uh, we're looking for people that um, look like teenagers, I thought this is for me. And I got an invite to the audition, and in the audition it was a dance audition. Now, this audition is, was a learning curve for me because I spoke to quite a lot of people in the audition and it was very packed into a very small space and the choreography was really, really hard to pick up. It was very bizarre choreography. It's choreography that I hadn't done before, like really good but really bizarre. And quite a lot of people in that room, I think, thought about leaving. I personally never thought about leaving, but I did think, wow, I'm really struggling to pick this up from the back. However, I persevered, and in the end, the director slash choreographer actually asked me to perform it in front of everybody. So that just goes to show, for one thing, that um, perseverance is key. If you don't get a dance at first, you're likely not the only person in the room not getting the dance. And also, just because you don't get it at first, doesn't mean that you're not going to get it at all. Yeah, anyway, in that audition something we also did was freestyle. Now, um, in freestyle the one thing I can say from my experience is when you freestyle just go with what you're comfortable with. Now, it's obviously got to go along with the music but I went and freestyled and I tumbled and I was very jazzy and very gymnastic-y. Now I did that because it's my style and I'm so glad I did that because they were actually looking for tumblers and um, I went first, they actually asked me to go first, I went first and I was really proud of what I did and I know for a fact that if, if I'd have gone in and tried to be like someone I wasn't I wouldn't have felt comfortable and I wouldn't have been so happy with the outcome so that's one thing I can say about when you're freestyling make sure you just do what you're good at and then they'll see the real you there's no point pretending you're something you're not because if you go in there and try and do a dance style you're not comfortable with likelihood is, is you're going to freeze and do something stupid like try and do a cartwheel and end up doing a roly-poly instead you know you know you know what I mean so anyway um I then got the job and I was filming over summer and it was a really really good experience what I would say to anybody that wants to act or perform is get yourself out for extra work because my role wasn't an extra all the time I was a featured like small featured character type thing um but I was an extra for a couple of days now being an extra is a, such a good way 
to if you're not confident in like featured roles like speaking roles like me yeah, I'm not very confident it's a really good way to get yourself into the um, acting industry now I've not got any other jobs from this job yet but like the film's not come out yet so who I really don't know where I'm gonna go but I would definitely advise getting yourself on some acting extras agencies if you if that's what you want to do I've just signed up for something called casting collective I only signed up a couple of days ago because some of the girls on that job with me were on it and that's how they got the job so basically I'm just signing up for as many agencies as I possibly can to get work anyway however so that was all brilliant, that was fabulous, but, you know, in the performing industry, you'll win some, you lose some. And last week, I went to two auditions, and the outcome wasn't as great as that outcome. And I'm not shocked nor surprised by the outcome. So one of the auditions I went to was for a Disney cruise ship. Now, I am on the books for Disney, and I have been for a while, but because of the film and stuff like that, I've, I've not been able to take a place or they haven't slash they haven't had a place for me so I went into this Disney cruise audition and we basically there was loads of people there over 200 maybe nearly 300 and we got split into group of groups of 40 and we went upstairs and did about three counts of eight a very simple ballet now straight after that I was cut um, one thing I can give you from that audition is if they cut you after three counts of eight or something it's not because you're bad it's probably because you're not what they're looking for like I'm a small muscular blonde girl they that day may have been looking for tall slim brunette girls who knows all I can say is I wasn't what they're looking for however it did not offend me at all because as I said I've already been on the books for Disney I know that I can do it and I know that one day maybe they might want someone like me um, maybe not but that's you know it's a learning curve and I will definitely audition there again and then the second audition I did last week was something completely different and something that I didn't realize was going to be so out of my comfort zone so I am auditioning for this job it's kind of like to be an elf over Christmas on a train I won't say about too much about it either because honestly I will eat my socks if I get that job um so I went in and it was a workshop and we were told to prepare a song. So first of all, we were told to sing the song a cappella. Now, that's where my first tr trouble came because I was like, oh my God, I'm not actually that great at singing. If I sing a song a cappella, it's going to have to be one I sound nice singing. But on the other hand, I want to sing an upbeat song because it's to audition to be an elf. But then if I sing an upbeat song, I'm not going to sound good. So, you know, that was already a dilemma there. So I, cho I, I chose a song anyway and yeah. I'll get to that bit but basically we went in and we did a lot of workshoppy style really fun like kind of games that you play in drama at school and these were all well and good like they're things that I'm used to we did them a lot at my uni as well even though my uni was for dance we played like lots of these games like basically like making a scene out of your bodies like they'd say oh be a tree and you'd all have to make a tree like I've done that a million times I was fine with that and then suddenly they were like okay now we're going to hot seat now, I might have hot-seated once before in my life. This is where you sit in the middle of the room and they give you a character and you've got to speak as that character. Wow. I cannot tell you how bad I did. Um, I won't go into what I did, but it was like people were laughing at me because I was funny. Because sometimes I can be funny, <laughs> but they weren't... But I wasn't good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was funny, but I was crap. So, yeah. One thing I can take from that audition is that I need a bit more acting experience if I'm going to be auditioning for things that have acting in them. Because I thought, with this um, with this film job I had, that was kind of acting, but it was, um, I got the job through dancing. I didn't realise that other acting auditions were going to ask me things like hot seating. Like, I completely did not expect that to be an aspect of my audition so when it came to it I was so taken aback it's something I haven't done I'm not prepared for and because of that I've actually been put off acting a little bit for example I wanted to do an audition for a panto uh, next week but they asked me to prepare a monologue and two songs and we were gonna learn a dance on the day now learning a dance that's no problem to me two songs and a monologue I actually I'm actually a bit nervous about that now from the hot seating experience and singing a cappella experience so if I can say anything to you guys is that unlike me you need to prepare yourself for the unexpected. Um from from now on I'm gonna 
probably start looking into some monologue repertoire. I feel like I'm not going to be able to be the person that just has a monologue easy. I think it's going to take me a couple of months to be comfortable to audition for anything that I need to do a monologue for. Same with singing. I think I'm going to have to get myself into some singing auditions because if, like me, you're not... You can sing, but you're not the most confident singer. I think it's really hard to feel comfortable choosing a song and singing it. Like, I definitely need some help, and I know that now. So, that's all I've got to say about my experiences, really. I just thought it would be helpful for anybody that is auditioning soon, or is auditioning for even drama schools. Like, you're just at the age where you're leaving college and you're auditioning and applying for drama schools. If you have any questions or want to ask me anything else about the industry, please, please feel free because I am at the stage now where I have had professional work and I will be continuing to have professional work, fingers crossed. So, any questions about working, auditioning, dancing, even drama schools and dance schools I can help you with, please feel free to comment down below. Also, if this video was helpful at all for you, please like and give me a subscribe if you feel the need. Thank you very much for watching guys and hopefully I'll see you again with the video shortly. Bye bye!